We will now proceed with the conferment of the degree of Doctor of Health, Honoris Causa. It is my honour to read the citation for this award. Professor Emeritus Sir Mason Jury. Kei na rangatiro te motu kua tai mai nei ki te hapai i tēnei kaupapa wakahirihira. Tēnā koutou katoa, nau mai. E mahi ana ki a koutou i a tātou mate i tangahia ai e tātou i o tātou marai maha. Haere atu rā koutou e nā mate. Hoki rāwa mai ki a tātou nā urupa o rātou mā tēnā ano rā tātou katoa. All recipients of Massey University's honorary awards are exceptional people, some more than others, close to the collective heart of the university. Emeritus Professor Sir Mason Jury is one of these. It is fitting that Massey University should honour him in 2018, the 30th anniversary of the year when he took up the chair of Māori Studies at Massey. Sir Mason is one of New Zealand's most esteemed and influential academics, and he is also deeply embedded in his local community. He is of Ngāti Kauwata, Ngāti Raukawa and Rangatane descent, and grew up in Aurangi near Fielding, where he still lives. After a secondary education at Te Oti College, he completed a medical degree at Otago University in 1963 before becoming a registrar at Palmerston North Hospital. After meeting at Otago University, University he marri married Arohia Kohiri in 1965. Arohia graduated in nutrition at Otago and for more than 53 years, they have worked tirelessly together for their people, their students and their country, while also bringing up their four children and many more mokopuna. In 1966, Mason was awarded the Narimu VC scholarship and with Arohia went to study for a postgraduate diploma in psychiatry at McGill University in Canada. It was during these years that he furthered an appreciation of the ways that the two world views of science and mātauranga Māori can inform medicine and bioethics. Mason developed an interest in community psychiatry and public health, which expanded further on his return to New Zealand in 1970. He worked over the 1970s and most of the 1980s as a psychiatrist at Palmerston North Hospital. He was director of psychiatry there for nearly 10 years, his interests widening beyond medicine and eventually earning him a place on the 1986-88 Royal Commission on Social Policy. Recognising Dr. Jury's immense mana, Massey University's leaders waited patiently for him to become available to take up the chair of Māori studies in 1988. Later, his remit was widened to a new role as Professor of Māori Research and Development, and he also served as the inaugural Assistant Vice-Chancellor Māori and later adding Pacifica. He was Deputy Vice-Chancellor from 2009 to 2012. A simple listing of positions in no way captured Sir Mason's contribution to the life of the university and indeed to Aotearoa generally. Academically, these were twofold. First, in terms of his own research and writing on Māori health and on social policy, and second, his creation of a context where others could flourish academically and personally. As a writer and researcher, Professor Jury led by example. His most significant publications were creating models for Māori health and health promotion, which have gained international recognition. Three of his Oxford University Press publications were submitted and successfully examined for a doctorate in literature, the first awarded by Massey University. So Mason's contributions went further than this, however. He was a champion of Māori education, his Māori at Massey policy seeing, for example, a tenfold increase in Māori doctoral completions over a 10-year period. 
the completion of the first doctoral and master's thesis in Māori, the establishment of two Māori research centres as self-sustaining entities, and ongoing links with Indigenous academic institutions in Australia, Canada, Hawaii, Samoa and Norway. Māori graduating students went on to fill important roles in the health and social policy areas, their research used extensively by government agencies and by iwi organisations. Within university structures themselves, Sir Mason was known for his strategic thinking and wise counsel. More than one senior leader of the institution acknowledged sitting back in response to one of Sir Mason's quiet but acute observations, sometimes in response to one of their own less well thought out pronouncements, where he would think and perhaps say, oh yes, I see. Sir Mason's wisdom and visionary leadership have been recognised beyond the university, across New Zealand and internationally. Sir Mason has received so many accolades that only a handful can be mentioned here. They include a 1990 QE2 Medal for Services to Māori, Fellowship of the Australian and New Zealand College of Psychiatrists, Fellowship of the Royal Society of New Zealand and of the New Zealand Academy for the Humanities, and other forms of recognition from such bodies as the Māori Medical Practitioners Association and the Public Health Association of New Zealand. He received a knighthood for services to public health and to Māori health in 2010. In 2012, the Royal Society, Te A Parangi, named one, of his, named one of its prestigious medals after him, putting him in the same category as Sir Ernest Rutherford and Te Rangi Hiroa. Sir Mason's has been a lifetime of service. A list in the Massey University archive of the various agencies, boards and committees Sir Mason has served upon totals around 50. The listing includes bodies, large and small, government and voluntary, and range from the Aurangi Marae Trustees, the Taunui School Committee, and, the, and Te Runanga o Rokau, of which he is Deputy Chair. To prestigious professional appointments, such as his most recent, to the inquiry into mental health and addiction. At a celebration of Māori graduates in 2010, Dame Tariana Tuia referred to a constellation of bright stars that settled over the marae at Aurangi, one which has now provided Massey University with three professors, Sir Mason himself, Lady Arohia Duri, who was first Professor of Māori Education, and Professor Mehana Duri, now head of Te Putahi Atoi, the School of Māori Art, Knowledge and Education. We must acknowledge how the Duri, uh, the Duri Whānau have shared Sir Mason with us and continue to do so. He maha nga kupe e korero o te au Māori e hangai pū ana ki a tā Mason. He hoki ki tanga mātauranga, he inati o te mōhio, he rākau tau mātua, he kotuku renenga tahi, he kuru pōnamu o te iwi nui tonu. Putanoa. Kauri o ara karaka, te riringitanga o te aroha o te maria ki a ia, mona i wakapau, wera wera nei mō te iwi, maung Māori te painga. Nō te hongo e noho ki ona rekereke i roto i nga tau te waimārie, te whihui, nga te mea. Kua whāngai hia te rahunga ki nō toi kā rangi tanga o te rua nuku o te wā, o te kōtahi o roto i te wakati pūranga. Tā Mason, e kore te waka mi hāro tanga ki a koe e mimihe noa hei roto i nā tau e kore hoki te puna o mihi ko tō waka pau kaha ki tō waka peto noi ki te waka miere pūrau he oranga mō te matatini e marioko noa. Kā pua ake te ui makohi i te wātū manawa ki hia maire, ki hia maira he koha e tuatū, 
he au ki te iwi, e, e runga i te manawa nui, te manawa popore, te manawa mahaki. No reida. I te taia o tua wakarere, kei kone te ketekete a te kaka, te kuku a te kereru, te koikwe a te tui, te rere kotahi atu nei ki a koe, tēnā rā koe. Sir Mason Jury maintains a leadership role across many spheres. At Massey University, continues to benefit from his immense mana and wise counsel. For that, we thank him, and so it is an immense privilege to present Emeritus Professor Sir Mason Jury for the award of the degree of Doctor of Health, Honoris Causa. It is now my pleasure to invite Professor Emeritus Sir Mason Jury to address the graduates. Chancellor, thank you for that rather lengthy introduction. <laughs> Uh, it took my mind back uh, considerably, but um, it, it really is a privilege to have received this honour uh, from the university, and I thank you for that. Uh, it's it's a, uh, a great privilege, it's, it's an honour, and it recognises work that has been done over several years, actually over many years. So I'm, I appreciate it great, greatly, but it's also rather humbling because uh, I've not been on this journey by myself. Uh, the journey that I've been on has been one which many people have contributed. I take the accolades, but the honour lies with many, many people. Uh, the honour lies uh, with my wife. You want to stand up for a minute? <laughs> And with my family, do they want to stand up for a minute? <laughs> and with my parents, well, they won't be able to stand up. 
and with uh, many, many colleagues in health and in academia that I've had the privilege to, working, to work with both here and in other countries. But today I'm particularly thinking of the late uh, Professor Neil Waters, who was the Vice Chancellor at Massey when I first came here in 1988. And I'm thinking of Professor Hugh Kafaru, who pioneered Maori studies at this university, and three others who were really instrumental in helping me adjust to this university, Pākaka Tāwhai, Paddy Richardson, John Bevan Ford. They all helped shape the pathway that I was able to follow. So this is an honour, Chancellor, for many people, and uh, we're grateful for that. Uh, but it's a particular privilege today to be able to share this ceremony with those of you who have graduated and will graduate it, and add my own congratulations to you. Uh, your efforts, your hard work, your occasional flashes of brilliance, and <laughs> above all, your perseverance mean that you're now able to take your place alongside the increasing large number of graduates who make up the Massey family. Uh, no doubt your own families are also proud. After all, they have shared the trials and tribulations of your academic pathways. They've often picked up the pieces. They've even, uh, even when they weren't quite sure what you were doing or where things were going, they were there for you. So your success is equally their success, and it's fitting that they can share that with you today. Uh, graduates and uh, graduates, your, your graduation is a tribute to your own efforts and your own determination. It's a hugely significant milestone in your lives. But if any of you or your parents thought that graduation would mark the end of a long and hard journey, don't be too disappointed if I tell you that graduation marks a beginning. It's not an end point. So a lot, many years ahead of you. Mass University is also known as the Kuninga Kipurehuroa, from inception to infinity. There's a beginning, but there's no end. And that really applies to learning. There is no end to learning. There is no end to acquiring new knowledge or rediscovering old knowledge. You can learn from postgraduate and postdoctoral programs, and I expect the university will be encouraging you to go away and enroll in the first postgraduate program you're eligible for. But you will also learn from your families. You'll learn heaps from your children. You'll learn from your communities. You'll learn from your marae. You'll learn just from growing older, although you tend to forget quite a lot of it. <laughs> and importantly, you'll learn a great deal on the job, whatever the job is that you're doing. Education by itself lacks a sense of completion if it does not also inform our actions after graduation. Uh, nor will the principles of learning that have been part of your journey, they may, may not always be sufficient in the years ahead. Learning in the future will bring new challenges. But seeing the wide scan of disciplines that you represent today, education, health, creative arts, humanities, social sciences, from a range of colleges and academic departments. Put all these together and they provide a clue for tackling some of the complex problems that all countries will face in the years ahead. If historians could work with nurses and if teachers could work with philosophers, if artists could work alongside planners and if linguists could work with social workers, or nutritionists with educators, or sport and exercise specialists with geographers, then your combined impact would be much greater than each working independent of the other. An integrated approach is not only important to us within our own communities, it will also have significant implications for the government. For too long, the many ministries that make up our government have operated largely as independent sectors with insufficient attention to coming together to address the realities that we live in. Good health and well-being cannot be achieved through the Ministry of Health alone, or by Oranga Tamariki, or by the Ministries of Housing or Education or Internal Affairs or the Treasury, each operating independently. What is needed is an integrated approach so that the formulation of policies and the implementation of programs can align more closely 
with real life experiences. Similarly, closer to home, an integrated approach has implications for universities. Interdisciplinary teaching and learning will challenge our universities to adopt degree structures that can transcend disciplinary boundaries to enable a type of learning that incorporates the interplay and the interaction of theories, concepts, and practices. And recognizing the indigenous knowledge systems that have been part of this country for almost a thousand years, so must we be doubly ready to explore more than one approach to knowledge and to learning. A collaborative approach does not mean an end to specialization, but it does mean balancing in-depth learning and teaching with joined up learning and teaching. And if universities are to play a part in preparing students for the future, they too must be ready to embrace and lead approaches to knowledge that go beyond the conventional curriculum. So in celebrating your new status as graduates, be ready to accept that first, there is still much to learn. There is no end to learning. Te kuninga ki And second, your impact will be much greater if you are ready to work across the boundaries that divide disciplines and sectors. Chancellor, all of us who are being honored today are grateful to Massey University for the opportunities we have been given and for the inspired leadership that has come from our professors, our lecturers, and our researchers. Tēnā koutou, i tā koutou mahi hōhonu. Graduates, I'm aware that a number of you will soon be returning to your own countries and to your own people. Take with you something of the Kiwi spirit, not enough to get you in trouble with customs, but, <laughs> but enough that it might inspire your children or your grandchildren to follow your footsteps and study in New Zealand. And to those of you who will soon be traveling overseas, not to return home, but to get away from home, travel well and soak up all the knowledge that the globe has to offer. Then to those of you who will keep the home fires burning, you will become leaders in your communities and our champions for learning and our champions for the acquisition of new knowledge and greater understanding. Finally, graduates, Kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa paunamo te moana, kia tere te kārohirohi i mua i tō huarahi. May peace and calm be widespread. May the waters you will travel over glisten like greenstone, and may their shimmering light guide you safely into the future. So kia kaha, be strong, kia maia, persevere, and stay well, kia ora. Thank you, Councillor. Eh, eh, eh.